Hello, my lichens. Welcome to Ant's Morning, a newsletter that is also a podcast. And now it's definitely more of a podcast because I have a microphone. <laughs> I used to record this on a recorder that was um, really tiny and cute, but... I think this sounds significantly better, so yes, uh, thanks to my um, late uh, Reyes Magos present, which is like our uh, Santa Claus. Um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> this issue is titled Golden Spring, Red Winter, and... It's almost February, but let's say it's still my January edition, okay? <laughs> uh, you know how this goes. Uh, there will be a couple of... or three, yeah, three pictures in the newsletter. If you, if you want to see them, you just have to go to the written version. Uh, if you're sus subscribed, it will be in your inbox uh, or probably in your spam folder. Sorry about that. It happens sometimes. And if you're not subscribed, you can always check out my archive of sent issues. It's on tinyletter.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto slash archive. Okay, um, I apologize in advance because I'm a bit shorter than usual because this month has been arrived. Uh, <laughs> now I'll tell you more about that. One, poems that don't suck. It's likely that you know already that I, I love taking part in Neil Hilborn's writing cult. I mean, sorry, right in circle. <laughs> sorry, Neil. Uh, I had to make that joke. Uh, it's a joke. We're just a bunch of lovely poetry nerds. And if you don't know, it's basically um, a writing circle of poetry. We get together. Well, we get together in Zoom, of course, <laughs> not in person. And we write poems and then read them to each other, basically. And I've been doing that for longer than that, for longer than a year, and I, I love it. Uh, although it kind, it kind of, it kind so, it kind of, <laughs> it kind of uh, alters my sleeping schedule a lot. But, uh, you know, whatever. The thing is, I've been thinking for a while that it would be really nice for me to join a... Uh, sorry, no offense, Neil, but <laughs> a kind of a proper poetry course because I, I think I need a bit more help with uh, my editing skills because... Uh, yeah, I, I haven't really studied poetry or writing, well, only by, m by myself, so yeah. I thought it would be nice to, to join, which is a five-week course, and I was in part um, advised this by some people in Neil's circle, and I want to thank Joe because... Um, they gave me kind of the final pass. Final pass, Miriam? The fuck, I'm, I'm not English, as you know. Uh, the final push. <laughs> I needed to finally um, do this course. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Jo. You're, you're amazing. And please, everyone else, go read Jo's poems. You can find them on Linktree, Linktree slash Yo Pangolin. Or you can just um, look for Yo Pangolin on Instagram, for example, and read their poems, okay? Um, okay, okay. Uh, I started 
PTDS, which is um, poems that don't suck. Yes, I am aware that it sounds uh, almost exactly like um, PTSD. I know, uh, we all know, but whatever, what can we do? Um, yes, we all know, but whatever, what can we do? Um, yes, sorry, I got interrupted, but I think I was saying that I started this course on the beginning of uh, January and I will finish in the beginning of February. I think it's the 6th or so. Oof, uh, oof uh, Megan Fally does not fool around. <laughs> I've been uh, taking notes, doing hum homework, writing and rewriting as if there was no tomorrow. Uh, I'm enjoying myself though. Uh, I've just been busy. Uh, so yes, if I haven't gotten back to you, I'm sorry. I, I will. Pretty soon. I promise. So yeah, I'd like to read you a fragment of one of the pieces I've been working on for these weeks. This one is uh, kind of based on Patricia Smith's, not Patty Smith, although I also love her. <laughs> This is based on Patricia Smith's 13 ways of looking at 13. And in this poem, she lists 13 key moments of her life as a 13-year-old. And in my poem, I list relevant moments or, or curious um, uh, things that happened to me uh, while on my Erasmus stay on Southampton. And that was, I think, on 2015. Uh, yes, yes, when I was on my third year of fine art. Okay, content warning, because there's a mention of sex, so yeah, be aware of that. The small blanket around my neck perpetually rained upon. Nothing gets the time to dry up. I am the yep. I am the basement girl. Below the roommate who fucks loudly. Below the roommates who know every Disney song by heart. Window to the back garden. My windowsill, the ashtray. It takes less than two months for the salt. This being the English city with the most sunny days and all. Celebrating nationwide its monarch's birthday, while I crack jokes about the entire Spanish royal family. Well, uh, don't worry too much about it in Southampton. <laughs> it just rained more than I would like to. Uh, and let's say my roommates weren't great. Uh, but... Yes, uh, you will see the whole poem someday uh, when I share it. It, uh, I think I will, yeah. And you will see uh, not everything was bad. 2. Golden Spring The first day I spent in England, I witnessed a display of joy induced by its monarch's birthday. Its birthday. Radio announcements, strict cheerful conversations, posters on double-decker buses. And it was uh, surprising, to say the least, because, um, well, for me. And maybe it's because of the level of punkness uh, ness, uh, in my environment. And it's true also that now I can make more Spanish monarchy family-based jokes than ever thanks to the incredibly, incredibly relevant, hilarious, blood-curling 2020, 2020 National Comic Book Award, Primavera para Madrid, which means Spring for Madrid, by Magius. I don't know if it will ever be translated to English, and it being a caricature of Spain's jet-set society, it might be hard to... But damn, uh, what a book! If you can, please read this comic, order it from your local bookstore, gift it to your family, demand it in your library, recommend it in your hair salon. Yes, please, please read this thing if you, if you can read in Spanish. 
If you check out the written version of this newsletter, um, there's a um, scanned page of Primavera para Madrid. It's um, <laughs> I'll try to describe it, but uh, it may be a bit hard considering um, um, maybe you're not familiar with Spanish culture and specifically Madrid culture, but uh, let me try to contextualize this a bit because uh, I assure you it's it's worth it. Okay, listen, it's uh, six, six panels on a page and a page and it's black ink on golden paper. It looks yellow, but it's golden paper. It's super cool. <laughs> And there is a drawing of a chulapa, which is a traditional Madrid folkloric uh, female figure. Um, they dress with a with a um, with kind of a polka dot um, dress, and with a um, scarf on their head, and also a flower. And uh, this character in this um, page is singing. A traditional chotis, which is also which is also a Madrid uh, folkloric um, thing, <laughs> and the original it's uh, basically an oath to the city of Madrid. But here in this comic page, it's let's say a different version. Uh, so let quickly the comic book version, not the original one. So be aware of some colorful swearing and some violent threats. When you arrive to Madrid, son of a bitch, I'm going to display your head in lava pies and dishonor your family in the Gran Vía. And vanishing, vanishing your crown will be my law. In Chicote, a butcher's lavish, liquidating every chivalry and causing street uproar, the most bloody in Alcala Street. Madrid, 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 nook of the misery I lived in. That's why God made you the, made you the cradle of filth and vile. <laughs> it's pretty amazing and pretty brutal. Um, so, yeah, I love this thing. Um, I highly recommend it. Three. Red Winter. It's been a while since I last shared a poem by a Spanish author, so here's one from the last book I read. You can find the original Spanish version on the written newsletter, but now let's, let me just read you the um, translation, translation I did myself. So, yeah, here we go. I exist. I fully know because I graced the drawing, by Marta Agudo. I exist, I fully know, because I feel the drawing of my viscera, the center, here now, in it I do it I duel, like the volume that firms up its necessary job, lustrum by lustrum, with no more direction than the photosynthesis or the old lady who crosses oceans without stroking, leaving memory, the banishment or the slap on the wrist, because much of that God ignites, learning the inmate's tongue, leaf after leaf, no matter if it's theirs of theirs, the nervation that connects origin to landscape, conscience to mission of making the ground, propagating truth. Okay, I hope I, I hope I did it some justice. Uh, it's a rather short prose poem, pretty amazing. And I made a note here when I said leaf after leaf. Um, keep in mind that in Spanish, these leaves are not only the leaves of trees. They are also paper seeds, uh, like the pages of a book. So yeah, that wordplay is... It's pretty sweet, if you ask me. So yeah, I love this poem with the tree leaves and the book leaves and this notion of writing, writing as if you were performing the photosynthesis. Uh, awesome. Um, this month I did a deep read... Um, no, a deep reading, sorry, <laughs> of this poem for my Patreon. You know, if you're interested and if you can afford it, of course, you can 
join me on Patreon. Just look for me on patreon.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto for as little as one euro a month or I think it's um, $150 a month. You can receive my monthly, um, this one, readings of my own poems, recorded with my lovely new mic, <laughs> and also musings uh, from my notebooks. That's kind of more personal. That's the top tier. I would really, really appreciate it if you, you can do that. Yeah. This gorgeous piece by Marta Agudo Ramirez can be found on her 2017 collection Historial and on the anthology of women's writing in Spanish around pain titled Rojo Dolor, um, literally, literally red pain. It's edited by Ana Castro. It's not translated, sadly. Again, if you can read in Spanish, I highly recommend it. Um, also, the book cover is gorgeous by Marie Christine del Castillo. Uh, what else? Um, well, there's well, there's no plant trivia today. I'm sorry about that, but I had to speed things up because time <laughs> this month. But let's say the leaves on Marta Gudo's poem are enough for now, okay? <laughs> Yep, yep, let's wrap things up. Uh, if you haven't yet, you can subscribe to this newsletter on tinyletter.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. Don't forget to click on the confirmation link, Tiny Letter will send you. Um, you can read the previous issues on my archive. My archive? I think that's all for now. Next issue will have a plant and will be a bit longer. Thank you for reading and or listening and I never know how to say goodbye so um, 